Hey everybody. Uh, tonight I'm just going to do a little bit of basic maintenance here on my gudgeon tank. I'm going to do a water change. I'm going to wipe the glass down. And I'm probably going to try to wipe the back glass as well. I'm still getting diatom algae growing in this tank. Uh, it's fairly new, but I would tend to think by now it should be starting to go away. I shouldn't see it as much as I do in there. Um, I think I'm going to test the water for silicates tonight. The sand I have in here is the same brand that I have in my other tanks, you know, that the planted medium I have, uh, this stuff right here that I've got in my 125 as well as my others. Um, it's the dark substrate, it's Floramax, it's made for planted tanks. This is just the sand version of the same stuff. It's supposed to provide all the same trace minerals. Um, I'm wondering if it doesn't have silicates in it though being sand I've actually looked at it under a microscope I wish I had a way to video my little microscope but it's a little cheapy portable uh, but it does have 60 times zoom and I was able to look at the sand very closely and it is a nice smooth uh, substrate for any kind of fish that would require that but I don't know what it's actually made of so tonight in the you know process of looking at the water chemistry uh, we're not going to bother with too much we're going to go look at the silicates though and see what kind of dissolved silicates we have in the water um, again I'm going to wipe the glass down and I'm probably going to get rid of all that floating water sprite in there it's not really doing anything it doesn't accomplish anything and it really keeps you from being able to see the gudgeons in all their glory with all their beautiful colors underneath that great uh, light I've got in there so let's get started and we will go over and check on the silicates while we're draining the tank and then it's just basically going to be a simple before and after uh, after that and I will do an around the world update uh, very soon here I know a lot of people have been asking for that uh, so that will be coming up very soon I do promise I've just had a lot going on and uh, I just haven't had around you know time to get to it yet so let's go get started and we will go look at what we're doing with the silicates in this tank all right we are going to get a little more footage today than I was thinking when I was in the tank uh, and the water level was draining, this is my internal UV filter. And when the water gets down a little bit, you can still see a lot of water flow coming out of this. And then once it gets down, the impeller is actually up in here. So once the water level drops below here, uh, you get no flow through it at all. Uh, it's not like the pump is down here pumping it up and through. So I still notice very, very little uh, water flow. So I went ahead and pulled this out and we're going to go ahead and take it apart. Uh, if I can remember how. I can see a lot of sand and grit. So this just comes off. That's got some sand and grit in there so we're going to need to rinse that out. This I believe is just these little pins holding it in. And the tube and the light is inside this little housing right there. So I don't think we're going to have to worry about that. I will go ahead and rinse that out. And be careful when you set these down. You don't want to set your suction cups on your washing machine or you'll never get them off again. Uh, let's see. This is my little bit of biofiltration that comes in here. That's actually clean enough. And it wasn't too bad. I thought it was going to be a lot sandier and grittier than that. So I'm actually not sure why we weren't getting a whole lot of water flow uh, with that. But I'll get rid of that. Uh, we'll put that back together and we'll go put that in the tank in a minute. These are my nitrates. They're not very high at all. There's only two fish in that tank. This is my tap water pH. It's about neutral. This is the tank water pH. It is about 7.5. So I still did a fairly large water change. It is going to knock the pH down just a little bit but I'm not too worried about that. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show you is I'm going to replace the filter cartridges while I'm in there. And the way I do it is I use good old polyfill. I get the extra loft or high loft is okay as well. I cut it into strips roughly this wide. It comes in a roll and then I just go ahead and open it up a little. I cut myself off strips as I need them. You can do this into sheets or circles or whatever kind of, however you want to do them, depending on whatever kind of filter you got. Um, this is real easy. Uh, if you hear that clicking noise over here, that is my well pump clicking on and off because I do have the water running in the other room. We are filling the tank at the moment, so that's why I'm moving as quickly as I am. I simply tuck them in there so that they're nice and snug. You don't want to trim right to the edge if you have this kind of filter, especially around the bottom and the reason is is as it starts to get clogged up and the flow of water puts more and more pressure on it it will begin to pull it 
and you want to have a little bit out so as it pulls in it doesn't actually just pull in and then give a space for the water to flow right around it and the bottom in particular when we go over and put them back in you're going to want the bottom in there like that and that's because these are makeshift filters if you actually purchase the ones that go with this they are filter pads uh, that fit in there and you can see these little teeth right here these teeth sort of grab into the filter pad that comes with it and it's made to work that way these are not so you got to cut them a little wide and leave a little extra space but believe it or not that is it that is the extent of the mechanical filtration I have in those tanks uh, one little strip of foam pads so we're going to go back over make sure the tank doesn't overflow on me and then we're going to go ahead and put this back together put the filters in etc etc so sit tight all right everybody i know we got terrible lighting back here in the corner but we're going to have to make do uh, these are just little doors that fold up and these go in they actually have front printed on them somewhere or back no nope, it says front right here somewhere on there it says the front you can't really put them in the wrong way they won't fit so it's pretty self-explanatory and that's about it you just slide them right in done uh, you can actually take this whole thing off and then it's got the biofiltration slides in right in front but it's biofiltration that's designed not to clog and you really don't need to ever do a whole lot with it how good it is I don't know but I've only got two fish in this tank so I don't need a ton of biofiltration in it anyway I did stop the water flow in because I want a little bit of room to work with because this is going to be the tricky part. Uh, the first thing we need to do is run the line through and out the back, which is not easy getting your arm in, and around the corner like that. And once you've done that, it's just going to be a matter of feeding it through. And getting back in here. And sticking it back to the glass. Now I do have a rock on the bottom. I know it's hard to see, but I set this on uh, the rock so that it doesn't actually go all the way down into the sand in the bottom. The fish still kick enough up that we obviously were getting it in there. Um, but that should do it. As you can probably tell a little bit here, let me move this back now that we've got the line in place. I did pull some of the water sprite out but not a ton. Uh, I left a lot of it in there and it'll start you know these all these are little tiny plants all these little things will actually grow and develop into a new water sprite uh, and eventually I'll have a great big mass like this again. So let's get back on with it we'll get it refilled and then we'll shoot the after and we'll go do a little bit of water testing and I still want to test the silicates too uh, and I do have some water over there so we're gonna go back for one more look at the water testing we'll look at the after pH to see how much we shifted it and we'll look at the silicates and find out if there's any reason why I'm still continuing to get so much diatom algae uh, growing in this tank so sit tight and I'll see you back over at the testing station all right we've got a lot going on over here as far as testing the silicate test that I had done one time before when I first got it uh, is actually more complicated than I remember there's a lot of steps involved in it uh, first of all, you have to fill your little pipette, you have to fill your little tray, that's all pretty self-explanatory. You put one drop of Reagent 1A and one drop of Reagent 1B in, and you let it sit for a few minutes. Then you put a drop of Reagent 2, and you let it sit for a few more minutes. Then you take your little swizzle stick here, and you take a dry stick, and you dip it in this powder so that it is, quote, lightly dusted with the powder and then you stir your little bit of sample and you wait two minutes well I did that and I'm getting almost no color change whatsoever it's just not really registering as any silicates at all so I then went ahead and did this which is for the very low range um, test and you are supposed to do six drops of each so I basically have done the equivalent of seven silicate tests as far as the amount of reagents I've used because I had to do six drops of each in here and then likewise dip this dry into the powder so that it was lightly coated and stir it around in this and I am getting some color change there is a slight bluish green tinge to it but the way you're supposed to read this test is take whatever color it appears to be and divide by four 
So it's still showing me virtually no color change. So if I divide less than one by four, we're still talking a quarter part per million on the silicates or something. I'm coming up with almost no silicates in my water, um, which I wouldn't expect a lot of from my well water. So if nothing is dissolving into the water once it's in there, there really shouldn't be silicates in there. So where I'm getting all this diatom algae growth from, I don't know. So we can talk about that after maybe I do a little more research and we go back and look at the tank once it's got cleaned up a little bit. As far as the pH goes, this is my tap water. This was the before and this is now the after. So we're still sitting up at about 7.2 to 7.3. Uh, we didn't bring it down a lot, but we still are above neutral when it comes to uh, my pH. The nitrates, and this is why I do not like the API test kit other than a rough guideline. I did at least a 50% water change. This is the before, and so that the sample was not just sitting there and aging because I'd actually done another two tests. I've done six nitrate tests now, and they would just keep turning the same color. So I just started these before we started shooting this video segment. So however long into this little segment we are is how long these colors have been blooming, uh, plus maybe 10 seconds. So these are supposed to bloom for five minutes, and I'm guessing we're getting close to that now and you can barely see a difference. This is the before and this is the after. You can see one's a little darker than the other, but with a 50% water change, I just really cannot imagine I'm not getting much in the way of color change. Now, I suppose I could test my tap water to see if I've got any nitrates in there. Uh, as an afterthought, I will do that after I'm finished shooting the segment, and I will put any kind of amendment if the water is high in nitrates. I don't believe it is. There's probably a little bit, but probably not enough to make any kind of an impact. So why I get such little change over such a massive water change is still a mystery to me. I've been complaining about that with API for a long, long time. So that's that, and that's what's going on with my water. I have no silicates or virtually none. My pH has not shifted all that much, and then, of course, my nitrates as well have not shifted all that much. I don't know why. So let's go back over. We'll have one last look at the tank, and we'll discuss my thoughts on these findings. And I'm going to go upstairs, actually, and do a little research on silicates and diatom algae and see what I can come up with and figure out maybe why I keep getting such diatom algae growth in that tank. So I'll see you back at the tank. All right, it is now the following morning, as you can see by my coffee mug there. I uh, came down and I decided I was going to test the water for both nitrates and silicates while I was checking the tap water. And I found some surprising results. My nitrates are about where I expected them. They're about five parts per million, or under ten. They usually are, even with my system. I probably need to add some more salt and do a backwash, and I can get the nitrates a little lower than that. Uh, so that could explain why I didn't get a whole lot of reduction in nitrates when we did the water change because you can see that vial is pretty orange. That is actually my tap water right there. Um, so I'm not going to sweat too much about why I didn't get a huge reduction in nitrates. I'm actually putting nitrates back in the tank with my tap water. Uh, the silicates, however, was the interesting one. Uh, you can clearly see some blue coloration there. That is showing uh, just under two parts per million and I have been doing some reading about silicates and two parts per million is plenty of silicates uh, for diatoms to use and grow. So every time I've done a water change in that tank, I'm actually putting silicates back in the tank for them to grow. So it may take a little longer uh, to get them sorted out, but we'll go over and look at the tank uh, now that it's had time overnight to settle down and look pretty again, and we'll go look at our follow-up and our final thoughts. All right, and there you go. Now to make this final segment a little less boring, because this really is a boring tank in my opinion, uh, I'm going to go ahead and feed these guys a little bit, and we'll see if we can't get a little bit of activity. They're pretty aggressive feeders. They come up to the surface, and uh, I give them flakes. Well, they actually are called crisps, but we will see how they react. Sometimes they are very aggressive. Other times they seem disinterested. Hopefully that will give a little better look at them directly under that 10,000K light and we'll get to see a little more of their colors coming out. So, why do we have almost no silicates in the original tank water and yet I've got almost two parts per million silicates in my tap water? Well, the answer is all of the diatom algae you see in the tank. All of that brown 
uh, algae is all single-celled organisms. It's a, a type of algae that uses silicates to create like a hard outer shell around itself. It's really easy to get rid of. It's really easy to wipe off. It does not really firmly attach to anything. So a gentle brushing will just will remove it off of just about anything, whether it's on your plants, rocks, glass, anything else. Um, so what I've got going on is two things. It is still a fairly new tank. Um, I was reassured that it can take up to six months for you to finally get the diatoms to settle out of your tank. But that is all dependent on keeping the silicates out of your tank. So the theory being is that when we fill the tank up with brand new water out of our tap and we begin uh, the process of cycling it in, so on and so forth, we've put a lot of silicates in the tank because we've filled it from the tap. Now, as time goes on, these diatoms build up and they grow and they fill the tank and they get all over the glass. Well, they're pulling the silicates out of the water. In the same way the plants pull the nitrates out of the water and the phosphates out of the water, the diatoms pull the silicates out of the water. So over time, you eventually end up with very little to no silicates in the water and you achieve this balance where no more algae can grow. So once you've wiped that algae down and you've removed it, as long as you're not swapping out large quantities of water, you won't ever put enough diatom or enough silicates back in the tank to really allow for a diatom explosion. What I've been doing with this tank is me and my big water changes. If I can do it, if my pH allows me to, I always like to do nice massive water changes to really clean the tank out, you know, get those nitrates way down, get the organics way down, and sort of start over with a nice fresh tank. Well, I've just now learned something new once again. There, I've always said that there are issues that can arise from large water changes, and this is now another one that I've got some personal experience with. Uh, I do believe it is because I'm doing these large water changes on this tank, and I'm putting water back in that has what I will call a significant amount of silicates. It's not a lot. Um, it still falls well under the norm for freshwater. Anywhere from up to two parts, two to four parts per million can be considered the norm in freshwater, uh, whereas ten parts per million is pretty much the average in a saltwater system. So at just under two parts per million, my groundwater does not have a lot of silicates in it, but diatoms only need one to two parts per million in order to pull silicates out of the water to form their shells. Once you get below that one part per million, there's not enough in there for them to grow. So I just did a great big water change. I have not retested the tank to see what the silicates are now, but they're probably, being that I did a 50% water change or thereabouts, they're probably up to about one, one and a half parts per million in the tank. So we may see some more of that brown diatom growth come back. I also have a very brightly lit tank and even for only having two fish in there, uh, you did see the nitrates were up around 30 parts per million. So that is more than a significant enough amount of nitrates to feed any sort of uh, algal growth that's developing in there. So factoring all these things in together, it's not surprising that I'm still seeing some diatom uh, development in this tank. And over time, knowing what I know now, I will approach my water change um, schedule on this tank a little differently and we'll see if we can't just get these tank to finally balance out and we'll be done with those diatoms. Now having said all that I'm sort of on the cusp of making some decisions about this tank because it really is a boring tank. Um, I'm standing here I just fed the tank you know they, they see the plants moving around so they're a little more active than they normally would be. Normally when I look at the tank it looks like a tank with some plants in it. It looks more like a boring aquatic garden. It's not even an interesting garden. <laughs> um, so this tank is, is sort of in the works of being changed around. I don't know what or how just yet, but I really am tired of just sitting here looking at this tank. So that's got nothing to do with this video. That was just a teaser for you. Uh, things will be changing and that might be my winter project. Who knows? But some point in the fairly near future, I think we're going to see some changes happening to this tank. So go ahead and subscribe if you're not already and that way you won't miss anything else I've got coming up, including what may or may not happen to this tank. How's that for a teaser for you? All right, I will see you all on the next one. Thanks for watching this one. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope somebody learned something out of that. I know I did. So thanks again for watching. I'll see you soon.